Hi, and welcome. I'm Jules Muller, founder and CEO of Chicks Connect, and we welcome all of you on live, as well as, as those of you that are watching the recording for our social media summit. And we have the beautiful Larissa Traquair with us today. And so Larissa, we welcome you, and we'd love to know more about you and your journey in the social media space. Hey, Julie and Chicks. I'm so excited to be here, and I am so grateful to have been asked and have been part of this lineup. And so, yeah, social media has been a super fun journey for me. What I always like to start off with, though, is I realize that social media is not for everybody, even though this is a social media summit. <laughs> so I'm assuming everybody who's here wants to learn more, but I get it. Um, I also get it that not all social media platforms are for everybody. It's, it's a lot to manage. Um, especially if that's not really your business or where your heart is. And so we get that too, but um, we're assuming we're talking to enthusiasts of social media. So my journey started many, many years ago when a friend, the most unlikely friend invited me on Facebook. She actually helped me get on Facebook as we were getting ready to move out of country. So I'm married to a Marine and we were headed to Okinawa, Japan in that particular season. So that was eight, nine, 10, 11, or 12 years ago. And so that's where it started. And I love to connect. Julie knows this about me. Now, now of course, I prefer the eyeball to eyeball connection. Nothing can take the place of that. We know this even as social media um, influencers. However, you can't do that when you're thousands of miles away from your loved ones and your close friends. So social media, specifically at that time, Facebook was that for me. So it was a way for me to share photos of the fun food and the adventure and that kind of thing. And then I started blogging and that was a way to share my thoughts mm -hmm. and it just kind of grew from there. So specifically I'm talking about live broadcasting today. And so my live broadcasting journey just started a little over four, four years and a couple months ago where um, I got on an app called Periscope. And I know not everybody is um, familiar with that. So Periscope is an app that you put on, it's a you know separate app that you put on your device. And in the beginning it was just on the phone and now you can also do it on your iPads or whatever device you have. And then you also can access it through a website to get it on your computer. So I felt prompted to get on there actually because of our pastor's wife, she was on there and Julie, it's funny because I'm not the most technically savvy person in my, in my sphere, in my friendship circle, if you will. So I'm usually the last one. So I was the last one on Facebook. I was the last one on Instagram, last one on Twitter. So I, of course, assumed I'd be the last one on Periscope. Well, I wasn't. I was the first one. So I was stumbling my way through. And our pastor's wife got on there and was using it like we would use our, our recorder on our phone. And I thought, why is she doing that? Why doesn't she just get on anyways I don't normally think that way so I just was really curious and I I don't remember what happened like how I went from the gap of seeing her do it to going on and then the gap between starting to broadcast I just knew and Julie knows this because she um, has been my coach for many years we take a little bit of a break in between um, because of my season of life and so she knows that I wanted to make an impact and it's hard as a Marine spouse to make an impact when you feel like you're constantly moving and having to start over. So I believe that that was the vehicle that the Lord gave me to start sharing whatever is on my heart. And so I didn't have a plan or a purpose in the beginning, which is why I can share with you guys kind of from the school of hard knocks. Like all of the things I have learned about live broadcasting has been the hard way. And then that's just what happened. I started broadcasting and four and a half years later, we've got a beautiful tribe. We just went over, I think it was like 40 million hearts, Woo! which is kind of fun. Um, and it's a, it's a thing that I can't do as a broadcaster by myself. I can't tap that many hearts physically, mentally, or even logically. I just can't do it. So that has been super fun. And our tribe has grown both online and then offline. So that's kind of the short answer to that question and tell us where you are in the world give us a little bit more about you okay we know so you're a marine's wife yep i'm a marine spouse we just went over 26 years of marriage on october 2nd and we live in the great state of texas so we live right outside of the san antonio area 
and it has been a fun ride. We just went over five years. So my husband retired five years, October 31st. We've been in our house a little over five years as of September. And um, we, uh, we do a lot. <laughs> we do a lot here. One of my main jobs that seemed in the beginning was wrangling our two adopted bulldogs at the time. Unfortunately, we lost both of them, but now we're down to one. We just got a new addition. His name is Samson. So he is here in my office and um, snoring away as I uh, share. So he's a three-year-old bulldog. My husband is a huge fan of golfing. So that is where he spends most of his time. And I do full -time, what most would call full-time ministry. So whether I'm volunteering at church or I'm broadcasting Monday through Friday personally with my tribe, that's kind of what takes up the most of our time. I guess the one thing that would be like a hobby or fun for me would be crafting, hence the washi tape rolls behind me. Um, it's really more for fun than it is for advertisements because not I don't sell anything crafty. Um, but I have the blessing of getting to share what I call the Grateful Workshop over the weekend at a crafting event where there were 35 other crafters and we had two other presenters. And so that's pretty much what you'll find me doing is hanging out with my Marine, my Bulldog, crafting or online. I love it. I love it. Well, during your journey, you said that you, uh, you know, started and, and kind of stumbled your way through it, the school of hard knocks, you learned what not to do, what to do. Um, what do you find that is the most challenging for others or you when you're just getting started or people who haven't started because they're challenged before even the gates open. <laughs> right. Um, I think the technology would be one. And then the second is fear. So I, all sorts of fears. Like, so once you hit what we call the broadcast button, so you press it and then you're on. And I do remember that feeling because it doesn't go away after your first broadcast, your fifth broadcast, your hundredth broadcast. It can stay with you for a long time. And there can just be days where I'll go to hit the broadcast button. I have to take an extra deep breath like, whoo, am I ready for this next hour? So in the beginning of Periscope, at least, and I, I do broadcast on Facebook Live as well, but that's not my specialty, but I, you know, I, I can answer questions and and I've been over there as well. But on Periscope, it is open to what seems like a whole lot more people. And so a fear can be absolute strangers coming in and honestly saying very inappropriate things, especially to women. And so I had to learn to overcome that and realize, A, it's just a screen. And B, I have a whole lot more control than I thought I did in the beginning. Because there wasn't a lot of like mentors or people out there who could like walk us all through this process. A lot of us had to learn this the hard way. The technology is not too hard. The biggest thing is um, learning whatever you can. However, if I waited to learn it all before I hit the broadcast button, I probably would have never started. So I would say start, and I had uh, have a couple tips that have nothing to do with technology that will set you up. Um, but if you're really feeling prompted, if this is really where you believe your heart is and you're being called to, it is so effective, especially if you're a connector. It is an effective way to connect both with people you know and people you don't know. But the biggest thing is technology and then like the fear of strangers and what people are going to say and maybe even like your surroundings. So I've broadcasted and had, you know, the dog snoring below me. I had the phone fall in my lap three times in the same broadcast because my mouth wasn't working. Um, so of course I was dressed as we talked about before we hit the recording. So always be dressed, my friends, um, or at least be wearing whatever you want other people to see because you can't control the environment. So the doorbell has gone off. Um, the husband has walked in and literally behind me, I used to broadcast in a different part of my office. He literally walked behind me and said, we got to go now. And I was like, okay, here we go. I got to go. I'm not sure what's going on. I'll see you guys later. You know, so, and I've broadcasted in the car and, you know, there's been, you know, all kinds of different things. So you just have to kind of get over that perfectionism. I think that was the other thing that a lot of people worry about is it's not going to be perfect. I'm going to say weird stuff. Well, I've said weird stuff. I've almost accidentally cussed one time. It got really close, which is kind of a big deal for me because I try not to do that. <laughs> I've spit 
I've had <laughs> snot trying to come out of my nose. I've had cilantro in my teeth. I've had lipstick on my teeth. I've had hair going five different directions. Um, the dog has come through and kind of shook the table and the, the broadcast. And I mean, almost everything. I'm trying to think of an example of something that hasn't happened. I can't really think of one. So you just have to be okay. And that's that authenticity piece that I'm sure someone spoke on this morning. People want to know that it's real. Like this is real yeah. life. And people actually are attracted to that. And so I go with the flow. Um, one of the weird things that happened this week, I burped on my live <laughs> broadcast. I'm like, how does that happen? Like I didn't have a chance to control it. It wasn't like I was going... <laughs> hold on and jumping out like I could with the nose because I could feel the nose starting to go and so I was like hold that thought I'm going to jump out you know I took the tissue and handled it <laughs> the burp just came out and I was like all right there we go that's a first and I just had to roll I didn't delete it I just kept rolling and left it for all of mankind to watch and hear well now that that brings up a question a couple questions first one that came to mind was have you ever thought that you ended the broadcast, but you actually didn't? And is it hard to tell if you have or have not? Um, like, tell us about that. <laughs> okay, so that is, that's a really hard one on Periscope. And the one thing we have to understand between Periscope, Facebook, I'm sure it's the same with Instagram stories and any live platform, YouTube or whatnot, is that technology is not perfect. Our, because we're dealing with our devices, our internet, our electricity, and then all the things that we cannot see or control on the other side. So yes, I thought I stopped the broadcast. And then I think I went, oh, holy cow, that was an interesting broadcast. And then I realized <laughs> I'm still live. And so, yeah, and I can't remember, I'm pretty sure it recorded and I left it. I just left it because I, I said, holy cow, not the other. So at least I have that going for myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so it is hard. So what I've learned mm -hmm. is I stop the broadcast and I wait a little bit just to kind of make sure I'm seeing all the things before I go, holy cow, that was crazy. Or that was a hot mess. And realize too, Julie, that what we think is a hot mess doesn't always translate. Most of my hot messes, I get the most private messages, text messages, you know, posts later that say, oh my goodness, this was amazing. You've got to watch my friend who talked on this. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I barely showed up for that broadcast. The dog was, you know, I've had the dog laying across my feet and snoring and snorting and the husband come in and the doorbell ringing and, you know, there's all these things, but people love that authenticity and they want to know that you're real. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so, yeah. so the, um, kind of the, the technical part. So let's say I hit live broadcast. Mm -hmm. Is it in real time or does it go live at the end when I hit send or whatever? Do I have an opportunity to pull it back or once I start live, somebody could be seeing it right in real instant time. Okay. Well, so Periscope is almost instantly and you can't pull it back, but you can stop and quickly delete it. But there is a chance that one or two people, depending on if you have a following and how fast they are, the notifications on, most of the time I would say some of my people would see it. So if I hit the broadcast button, the dog comes running in, my nose starts draining and I say, oh, holy cow, um, <laughs> all of that could get recorded before I could hit the stop. But for Facebook Live, it has a countdown that actually shows you three two, one, and then I usually kind of take a quick breath. Um, again, it's not perfect because you can think you have it down to a T and it won't start or stop exactly. So you just got to give it a little more cushion on either end, but you can delete all of them. The good thing about Facebook Live is it will give you that option. It'll stop and then it'll say, do you want to share? So okay. though it was live and people could watch it, you could choose not to share it and delete it. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Good. Yeah. To know. Oh my goodness. Exciting. So, um, so we understand the challenges, the fear, as well as the technology sometimes. Yeah. Um, and then what solutions do you have for us or what tips and nuggets and ideas do you have for us today? Okay. So this would be for someone new or even someone who's been doing it 
for a while, as is most things in life, is consistency. And especially if you have a ministry you're promoting or a business you're promoting where you really want to take this thing seriously, you have to show up consistently. Now, back in the day when Periscope first started, they would say five days a week for a business owner. Uh, nowadays, I don't know that that's true. So uh, you could even show up one day a week, but you need to be consistent. So whether it's Monday through Friday, I wouldn't go week to week and go, well, this week I'll do Monday, that week I'll go Wednesday. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to build a following, and again, I didn't know that's what I was doing in the beginning. So this is, you'll get, you know, everyone else will have the benefit of, of me learning the hard way, but I would always pick at least one day a week, the same day a week, preferably, and the same time. And you got to be really good with that whole East Coast, West Coast, right. mountain time, central time. So that's why when, no matter who I'm talking with, I always say, 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, because that's because I, I know that we're dealing with people all over the world because of social media, and then of course in our life because of all the military moves. And then how long you broadcast is up to you. Each platform kind of has a little bit of a different take on that. I do an hour-long broadcast on Periscope. However, I built up to that. I only started with 15 to 20 minutes. So, and Facebook tends to say go longer because you, it, it gives people a, a chance to get in and say hi and that kind of thing. I would say, as long as you're sharing good content, as long as you have the time, then do it. If not, then I, I would say, I probably wouldn't do more than less than five minutes, but that's because it's really hard to say hi and engage, which we'll talk about in a couple of minutes and deliver your message unless your message is hi i sell cups and i want you to buy them from me <laughs> find me at cup.com <laughs> you know right, I mean, but, right. but now as far as a, a question really quickly about periscope because i thought i thought periscope was tied to twitter is that true mm -hmm. or not true yeah. mm -hmm. true twitter so, bought out okay so if i have a twitter account with 5000 followers let's just say um, and I do a live broadcast, does it alert those 5,000 followers or do I have to build a whole new following? You don't have to build a whole new following, but again, it's not a perfect system. So they don't always get notification. So this is where building your tribe, engaging them and asking them to share out is helpful. Because I some of my regulars even, I had several people on Monday and Tuesday say, I didn't get notifications. I'm like, y'all, no, we don't always get notifications. Set your alarm for 8.58, you know, a.m. You just have to know, you have to go and look for me. Because we just, we just don't have that kind of control. We don't, there's nothing else we can do about it because it's technology and it's theirs. But yeah, so Twitter bought Periscope out, I think within four months of Periscope going live. And might you show up um, to someone who doesn't know you exist yet? I mean, could you show up in the uh -huh. Periscope feed or the Twitter feed? Yes. Uh, just absolutely. randomly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely on Periscope, you will show up in the feed and you'll stay up there for a few minutes. So you do kind of have that few minute window, which is ideal, especially if you have people jumping in right away. And that only happens if you have followers because you've been consistent. So that's the one thing I get from people all the time is, you always show up, I can count on you, come thick or thin, short of obviously emergencies and, and change of schedule and that kind of thing, so. Great. Yeah, yeah. So do you want me to go on? Yes, I, please, I sorry, I was, I, No, that's okay, no, I love that. I, I'm used to being interrupted, so feel free to Okay, do maybe that. one more then, one more. Yes, yeah, perfect, <laughs> um, yeah. So who is on, like, how would we know if our target market is on Periscope? Um, and uh, is that again trial and error? I mean, you said you built yours over time, but mm -hmm. how could someone find out if if people who buy cups are actually on Twitter right. on Periscope? Yeah, and that, and that's an interesting question, Julie, because there are people who will tell you that Periscope is dead, that nobody's over there. Well, I just went over forty million hearts, so I th there are people there. I still follow people. I go on other people's broadcasts. So it is not dead. Now, is it dead compared to where it was four and a half years ago? Yeah, it's not as popular. But four and a half years ago, you had people who were broadcasting their refrigerator. I yeah. mean, for broadcasting themselves sleeping. 
broadcasting themselves smoking marijuana. I mean, stuff that just wasn't helpful. And um, so, so yeah, in comparison to that, I guess you could say, and some of the big wigs that were on there, I don't see on there anymore. And I don't know the who, what, where, when, why. So I would say it depends. So if you have maybe more of a life coaching business, my first thought is Facebook, because you most likely already have a Facebook page and you've built a little bit of a, 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 a group there. On Periscope, it is great for finding your niche, which we're going to talk about, finding your people and seeing if they are there. And that's where you, that you would have to just do consistently every week. So assuming, because I go technically five days a week. At one point, I was going seven days. Another point, I was going five days a week plus Facebook Live. Uh, you don't have to do all that. I'll kind of explain why I chose to do that. You don't have to do that. However, you after, I would say at least maybe give it a month, one day a week, that would be kind of hard, but maybe give it a month showing up consistently with good content. Again, not just going, I sell cups, please buy them from me. You know, obviously sharing good content with our, our chicks know all that kind of stuff, but just in case someone else sees, you know, sees this, um, cause we're, we'll talk about that as well as adding value, but that I think probably a month consistently would give you an idea However, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to tell. Um, if you can't do Periscope, um, I highly recommend Facebook Live. It's a slower pace broadcast. Facebook people are not as into Facebook Lives as Periscope people are into Periscope Live broadcast. But Facebook mm. does, you know, it does things totally different. And like in my case, in your case, and probably most of us, our personal following is there. So that's a great place to start with friends and family. So they find out, hey, what are you doing? And then they share out. But the biggest thing is sharing, is ask your people to share and make comments. Because especially on Facebook, Facebook loves Facebook. It's just like a teenager with a selfie, right? <laughs> they love themselves. And so that's why it's so important for us as chicks to share each other's content, which someone else has probably already covered that. So when Julie shares something, we want to share it from the public page, either Julie's, you know, public business page, Chicks Connects community, that the, the open one, we want to share it directly from the page so people know where to go back. And it shows Facebook, hey, there's some activity over there. Mm -hmm. And we want to go over there and check it out. You don't really have that opportunity on Periscope as much. And Facebook has the replay option where you can actually comment on the replay, whereas Periscope, you cannot comment on the replay, unfortunately. You can heart and you can share, but you cannot go in and say, hey, Larissa, I'm showing up later. So, oh. and do, that makes uh, me think. Do you know if anyone has viewed the replay? Does it show mm -hmm. you um, analytics? It will show you numbers and okay. there's a back way to go in there. One of the things that several of us have started doing, and this is not my original idea, so I don't get credit for it, is telling people to hashtag replay for you because that gives them something to do. It's a call to action and Julie's very familiar with that. And it gives you something to look for as the broadcaster. Now it's nothing magic. It's not like Facebook all of a sudden goes, hey, all your replay viewers are here. It's it just, it gets their comment in the feed and then you can go back and go, hey, thanks Julie for watching the replay. You know, how did the content hit you? Or maybe you've said a few things down on the bottom, you know, underneath that, like, oh, I love that, or you have a question. So I always say hi to the replay viewers on Periscope. I always say hi to the replay viewers on Facebook. I always remind them they matter, they're important to us, and this is how you do things here on Periscope, or this is how you do things here on Facebook. So re replay is key on both of those. Uh, I don't know Instagram, and I know we've got a, an Instagram specialist in here, so watch them. I don't know, did they already go live? Julie? Nope, they're, they're after you. They're after me, okay. So yeah, stay tuned for the Instagram <laughs> expert. So um, yeah, so replay is key on at least those two. So maybe write that down, Julie, and yep. ask her, is replay king also on Instagram? Because that would be, that will bring us full circle. So do you awesome. want me to keep going? Yes, keep going. Okay. So um, one of the things about consistency is that showing up consistently tells your audience that you're committed and serious about what you're doing. 
So again, yeah, you can get on there and just play music if that's your thing and you just want to do that. You could knit, you could do crafts. However, if you're wanting to sell something or, you know, make new relationships for further endeavors, that kind of thing, you really need to be consistent and show people that you are serious. But it's a great way to make an impact, which I talked about earlier. And Julie knows this from years ago when one of my heart's cry was, I want to make an impact. I want to make a positive impact on the world. And God has answered that prayer a hundred times over now, which has been super, super fun. But it also gives you an opportunity to build relationships and find new clients. And there are a lot of success stories on all social media platforms because this gives us the ability to say, hey, I like her. And especially like, let's take life coaching for an example. You don't want to just life coach with just anybody. You know, you want to know, hey, is this our, is this my, are these my people, um, you know, male or female? What are they experts in? Is that what I need? It's like, kind of like going to a counselor. It's like you don't, you don't go to a counselor who's an expert on family if you're grieving or, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. that kind of thing, if you want to find it, or if you want a special business life coach, you don't go to someone who that's not their expertise. So it's kind of the same on social media. It gives you an opportunity to show people what you are an expert in. Um, and one of the examples for me is my, my business mentor, my business coach. I followed him for at least two plus years before I ever took advantage of any of his free challenges. Then I took one free challenge and then signed up for his, I'll call it a camp. It wasn't a camp, but a webinar or something, a series. And then out of that relationship, he became my, my mentor, my business mentor specifically. That's two years of him showing up every day, me showing up, me sharing out and us interacting. But, but two years is a long time. So you, you've got to You've got to be willing to just keep showing up because you never know when it's finally going to click. And I was not in business at the time. I was not pursuing anything. And so he started noticing a trend. I was inviting my friends who were not doing business either. We were just people looking for encouragement, looking for, in this case, he, he is a, a faith-based mentor. And so we found that niche and then we just kept showing up. And then some of my people have done business with him now. So it's not going to be a one and done. It's not going to necessarily be overnight, though, you know, someone else can teach on, I'm sure, in our group on how to, you know, people who are in business and ready, how do you, how do you close them, so to speak? So, so those are those things. And I mentioned niche, find your niche. And that's important because you want to build that authority. So I'm an authority in, right? Or this is my specialty. And this can change because um, I didn't know what I was doing. Again, I started live broadcasting with no agenda. I just knew I had stuff to share. And I was in a place in my life where I didn't have a, a platform, if you will. I wasn't in a leadership role at my church. I wasn't getting out of my house. I wasn't in the normal places where other people might get asked, hey, do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? Or get to use the giftings. And so this was an opportunity for me to share what was on my heart. So my broadcasts were super short. I, they started at um, less than 15 minutes. It was just a tip of the day. And I actually used the dogs. At that point, I had Hope and Chip, the Bulldogs. You remember that? I do, yes. Yeah, so I kind of used them as my gimmick, if you will. Again, not with a real plan, but I thought, I want to share my heart, but it was 7.30 in the morning at this time. My broadcasting time has changed. And I was still in my pajamas, and I knew not to go live in my pajamas because I'm not, I'm not selling jammies. I'm not selling other stuff. And so pajamas were not, you know, I had bedhead the whole bit. So I just showed the camera on them. Now, back in those days on Periscope, you had to flip the camera around. It was kind of, so it was just easier to focus that way. So my, my niche has stayed the same, though I have grown. And I went from 15 minutes to 30 minutes to now an hour. And sometimes I'll go a little longer and I can talk about that. It's not, I don't teach about the tip for an entire hour. That includes, you know, welcoming everybody. That includes introducing myself. We do a celebration time where we celebrate. I have actually a theme song that someone wrote for me. And so we play the theme song for 60 seconds and we get silly. And then we celebrate things like birthdays, anniversaries, sobriety dates, 
Um, do you have a new dog? Did you just graduate from college? You know, all, all things positive. We love to celebrate. And then typically I roll into my content. And so Larissa, um, some people might not know how you get that information from your tribe. So can you talk to them a little bit about the interaction that's going on while you're yes. live? Yeah, so on Periscope, which is the same with Facebook, the biggest difference is the two move slower. So Facebook has about a 15 to 20 second delay. So it's a little harder to communicate real time, but you just get used to it. And so what happens is, is I'm talking like I'm talking to you guys, but what they are doing is texting me back technically. So they're writing in a comment box back to me. So I'm saying, hey, Julie, welcome. So glad that you were here. And then Julie says, hey, hi from, you know, on the road or from the RV or from the great state of Texas, I'm visiting Larissa or whatever they want to say. And then we roll in that way. And so that's one reason why I'm used to being interrupted because in Periscope, it goes really fast and people are constantly saying stuff. And I respond to a lot of it. It is, it, it's part of who I am. It's important to me. Now I can't get everybody. And when I get into my content piece, I have to kind of monitor that and not let everybody interrupt me. But it's, it's definitely faster paced and a little crazy compared to Facebook, which is a lot calmer where you can kind of get through stuff and no one's interrupting you. But basically it's like talk and then text. And are they, are you um, on your phone or are you on your computer? And is one easier to see the thread than the other? That's a great question. So I'm on my iPad, just like I am right now. I keep my phone to my left because two things, one, it allows me to see it's, it's got my time. So it's got my clock on it. It allows me to see text because sometimes I'll say, hey, Julie, will you text me that really fast? Because someone might ask a question or say, hey, Larissa, you said you were going to do X, Y, Z. Well, especially in this season in my life, I can't remember it all. And I don't want to stop to write it, though I'm here at my desk. I want to stay on topic if I can. So sometimes I'll write it, but sometimes I won't. So it's easier for me because the iPad is bigger, right? So the surface is a whole lot bigger than I can see the comments versus the phone though on the phone I do it. I mean, if you have to, it's harder to see the, 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 the comments on Facebook for some reason on the phone, just the way it sets up versus Periscope. And, and you just, it's just, it's kind of hard to explain. It's one of those things you just have to kind of go in there and as a broadcaster, you're like, okay, I get it. Yeah. So it's what, that's what's one of those kind of experience only kind of things. Right. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so we, so we, once you create your niche again, it can kind of change, um, and grow with you. But one of the things you can do is think about what are you good at? You know, you talk about this, what are you passionate about? Especially if you don't have a business, if you have a business, your lack of past compassion or passion for it will come through. That is the downfall of live broadcasting. It's really hard to fake it. You can try, and all of us have gotten through, you know, I've gotten through when I thought I was choking, when the snot was coming out of my nose, when I've been cranky, but you can't hide that every single day. So you need to really find something you're passionate about. So if you're not passionate about cups, don't sell cups, which you would say that anyways, <laughs> you know, why would you want to do that anyways? However, you know, it just, it is what it is, but your, your passion will come through one way or another. So figure out what you're good at. For me, it was cultivating gratitude and wanting to share a tip of the day, a positive tip of the day. Now, there will be times where I feel really compelled to talk about, like, let's talk about negativity and overcoming it, but it's always with a positive spin. Like, we don't talk all negative, 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 the whole broadcast. I leave them always on a positive note. And because who, I mean, we, there's enough negativity out there in the world, right? Um, the other thing you can do, and this is one thing that like my, my, uh, business coach would talk about is find that pain point. So for me, it's a lot of people don't want to be negative. They're really tired of being negative. I, I get this, especially at my workshops, people are a little bit more authentic and honest. See, there's real life. There's the dog in the background deciding to bark at the air. I'm not sure what he's barking at, but anyway, so you just keep rolling. Right. And so people will share like this weekend at, at my, um, at my workshop, a gal just came to me and she's like, it's just so hard. And I'm like, yeah, you, you listen to me for two total hours. I didn't talk for to two hours solid because it was also crafting. I said, it's a process. I've been doing this for six years, Julie, you've been on this 
journey with me since day one. You helped me incorporate it into my nighttime routine. Mm -hmm. And so I've been cultivating gratitude for six years consistently, day in, day out. And there are days where my husband looks at me and he's like, uh, where did Grateful Chick go? Because <laughs> you're not so grateful right now in this moment, right? And so find that pain point in you, you know, you, like for me, it was, I was feeling like I was in a funk. I was in a weird place in my life and I needed help getting out of it. And so that's where you filled that pain point for me. Organizers, you know, would feel that pain point. Hey, people are tired of being disorganized. I'm trying to think of what other people do. People teach on social media and how to do this. This is their whole niche on live broadcasting. And so they share a tip of the day. I um, you know, we could go on and on dog training. You know, we've got several pet experts that are on Periscope and Facebook. And so they share, how do you use essential oils on your pet? How do you do training for your pet? They offer webinars. One of my favorite people to watch right now, her whole niche is helping families parent better with mm. younger kids and how to get out of the overwhelm, stop screaming. I think that's like part of her motto is, I'm here to help you stop screaming at your kids. And she is doing well. She's doing, so who knew? Like I, who knew there was a coach for that? I mean, that's, that's awesome. So that's um, another way to, to find a pain point. And typically it's because we had that pain point, right? Mm -hmm. um, for me, I, I wouldn't have considered myself a really negative person However, I knew something had to change. And so I was prompted to start focusing on gratitude. Maybe I would say I'm more, I was more of a whiner, which is negative, but yeah. So anyways, but that's kind of where um, that came out of. And then kind of along those lines is once you figure out what your niche is, and again, I think there's room to move around in that, then you start thinking about content. So did you have questions about any of that or do you want me to keep rolling? Keep rolling. This is awesome. Okay. So creating content. Well, I don't, I, I don't know if we want to open it up. Um, yeah, if anybody if has. Any, uh, please use the I'm, chat bubble and then we'll just, um, at any point in time you have a question, please, I don't want you to forget your question. That happens to me quite often. So type yeah. it in the chat bubble and then um, I'll be sure to bring it up to Larissa and then we'll open it up at the end um, okay. for additional questions. Yes. Perfect. Yeah, because I, I don't mind answering questions because this is such a broad topic. It's so mm -hmm. hard even with all of us thinking we've covered it all, right? So um, creating content is probably the other pain point for broadcasters, right? So first you gotta figure out the technology and then kind of get over the fear and then where do you get the content from? And I, I'm not gonna have the best answer for some <laughs> um, because I believe this is my calling. Like I was called to go on specifically live broadcasting but social media in general um, because I believe that's my ministry. So I believe that I've been called by the Lord. So because of that, I believe he gives me the content. However, I'll try to answer that in a more logical, non-faith-based um, manner. One of the, so one, one big piece of advice is if you're thinking about going live is have at least a couple weeks worth of content, if not 30 days worth of content ahead of schedule, ahead of time, like have that so that you can build on that. And especially because you want to stay consistent. And what I have learned is once I've created content, new content comes out of that content, A. B, your people are going to ask you questions that you're not even going to think about. So I'll write that stuff down, or that's an example, Julie, where I'll say, hey, Susie, will you send me, a, you know, if I'm, if I'm friends with them, a text, or will you send me a private message on Instagram, you know, or wherever we are friends outside of the live broadcasting, which I highly recommend you tell your viewers, connect with me on one other social media platform. Because live broadcasting, though I believe it's here to stay, we can't be guaranteed maybe outside of Facebook how long all the other ones are going to last. Now, mostly Facebook, Instagram, <laughs> Twitter, I think all those are going to last, YouTube, but maybe Periscope. It's a separate app technically, so maybe it won't last. I'm not trying to be negative. I'm just trying to be smart. So, so definitely tell your people, reach out on at least one more platform that I am on so we can communicate because in Periscope and Facebook, you cannot message within the um the system outside of whether it's live or on the replay but if, so if you want to send me a message at midnight tonight because you think of something yeah you could put it in the replay on facebook live but it would just make more sense to send it in a message so so anyways so creating content 
um, also from what they ask. So people bring up their own pain points. So I get people asking me all the time, you know, so how do you do this? How do you do this? Sometimes it's not in my wheelhouse. So I'll write it down and I'll say, hey, that's not so let's what's an example parenting. So parenting is not my jam. I don't have kids um, by choice. Now I could tell you how to wrangle a bulldog and maybe you can translate that. <laughs> Um, but what I can say is my friend Susie Q is an expert on parenting or my friend Julie has a pair of, of twin boys that are teenagers and they're in an RV and she knows how to do all that kind of stuff, you know, so I can refer them out. Um, but for the things that I think I can handle, if it's a spiritual question, I don't know the answer to, I either write it down or I try to help them have some skin in the game. Like I'm not just going to broadcast on. I don't know, Let, I'm trying to think of, you know, like sin, let's say sin. I'm not going to go and do a broadcast on sin if somebody's not going to send me a personal message and say, look, I'm struggling. How do you overcome sin? That's just a, you know, a, maybe not a great example. Um, but I want them to have a little bit of a skin in the game. And also, is it something that I'm comfortable with sharing and prompted to share? So that's been the neat thing is that it all kind of snowballs. And then there's also that whole thing called repurposing content. So there are times where I'll do a broadcast on, you know, overcoming negativity. And I realize, wow, there is a lot to this. And I don't want to go over my time frame too much. Like I try to respect that there are other broadcasters. Some people will broadcast for hours and that's their thing. But I also have a life and I want to, you know, sometimes I have a chiropractor appointment at 1030. And as Julie knows, you got to have some margin. You got to go potty and you got to drive. <laughs> to get there right so so yeah so I um I get content everywhere I'll write myself notes on my phone on a piece of paper that kind of thing and it rolls but I've also been trained for four plus years in doing that same with you and writing our newsletter right Julie I think you just get into this content mind so in the beginning I would recommend at least two weeks if not 30 days worth of content at least maybe not all written out but you know, if you're an expert on parenting, what are going to be the 10 to 20 to 30 pain points you're going to cover? What do you want to talk about? That kind of thing. And then go from there. So, and you're doing that to share, you know, your expertise. I don't, again, like I don't talk about being an expert in parenting or, you know, running a marathon or eating healthy um, and even in my sphere, you know, I, there's so much I have to learn. I have not read every book on gratitude yet. I have not, you know, I've not gone to a gratitude retreat that someone else is doing. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm still learning, but I have a lot of experience. I think six years of experience gives me a little bit of credibility. So just a tad, just a tad, <laughs> just a tad. Um, and then I guess the last, so the, the last two things I was going to say, and I know we're shortly running out of time and I want to take questions if there are any, the best way to influence others is by being authentic. And I know someone's going to speak, um, to that. Um, but just be you and allow those kind of quirky, weird things to happen. I have cried on my broadcast before. I don't love it because of course the mascara, the snot, and then it's hard to talk, but it, it happens things happen and whether it's about my life or someone you know people share stuff they start to get to know you they think they know you and maybe you're a little closer than you are and they blurt things out and you know I mean I've had people come on and say I've just lost my husband and we're in the middle of a theme song and I'm like okay this is not comfortable but all right we're gonna go there you brought it up and I stop and I pray which is not everybody's thing um so there'll be some interesting things but just you know, just be real. Um, so be authentic, try not to be perfect. And, and someone else shared, I think a little bit on that already. Be honest. So don't make stuff up because it's recorded. They can come back and say, well, you said X, Y, Z. And it's like, ah, so I tell people, I don't know the technical answer to that. This is my experience. If I have experience, if not, I just, and a couple of times I've said, you know, I've had people ask me some pretty deep spiritual questions. I'm like, I don't know. I would look for a pastor in your area because there is, I just can't, I can't, I can't go there and I don't feel prompted to go there right now. Maybe someday down the line, the Lord will put that on me, but not. Um, oh, I think someone is saying I've learned that improv works as well. Yes. <laughs> 
Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, so be truthful when you're sharing stuff, but be kind. Um, also don't preach. So I try not to come at this as I'm, you know, an expert on gratitude, though I have a lot of experience, but I'm, I'm open to, to, to flow a little bit and, you know, people can't argue with my experience, but there are some of the technical stuff, you know, like some people say it takes 21 days to create a habit. Well, I've worked out for a year solid and eaten healthy at a season in my life, and it all went down the drain with one crisis. You know, so 21 days to build a habit, not always true for every single person. So there's a little bit of, you know, looseness there, um, if you will. Um, so I just try to share what's worked for me, and I always tell people, but what works for me may not work for you. It's not a one size fits all kind of thing. And I could go on and on. I think the biggest thing, because I, I want to, I'll wrap up just this part with um, the online tribe. The biggest thing is engaging your audience. And this can be hard depending on your personality, but you want to get people commenting. You want to get people asking questions because you want them to want to come back because it's not, broadcasting isn't one and done. You want those people to keep returning and then you want them to want to invite their friends if you're, if you're trying to build a tribe and that's, and make an impact, right? Cause you can't always make an impact in one broadcast. Cause I might be talking about, I don't know, like on Monday I did a recap of our weekend and kind of showed a bunch of crafty stuff. Well, if you know, Jill Smith jo showed up that day and she's not crafty, she might be like, eh, but she was fun and positive. So I'll come back tomorrow where I shared, an actual tip of the day versus a recap. So that engagement piece is so important to get your people engaged. That's a consistency thing. That's a friend thing. This is the thing that drives me crazy when I go into someone's broadcast is when they don't say hello and they don't at least take time every once in a while to reintroduce themselves halfway through and they don't say hi to people. Now there is that caveat that sometimes we don't see you. And so that is hard, but when you're a new broadcaster and you only have five people come in, just ask people to make a comment so you can see them, write yourself notes. I have post-it notes. I have three by five cards all around here to remind myself, smile in the beginning, actually to write, you know, smile, you know, you know, you know, be enthusiastic, you know, all those things. Cause you think you are and you go back and watch yourself and you're like, I'm not, I'm not. So anyways, <laughs> but I could go on and on, but I know we're getting close to the end, but it definitely, um, it can be a really fun way to get to know people. And also um, one thing that really surprised me was how many people wanted to meet off the internet. And I'm, I'm very careful about this because we want it to be appropriate. We want it to be safe. And so I don't meet with people by myself and usually it's more of a meetup. So like you guys have done Jules all the way through the continental U S Hey, we're going to be here. And we can all meet up at, you know, a place like Starbucks or, you know, whatever, this local place where it's, you know, during the day where it's safety in numbers, you know, you want to be really careful, but people want authenticity and that eyeball to eyeball connection. And um, it's a great way to build a tribe that way too. So a lot of my viewers that keep coming back, I've met over 80 to a hundred people already in the, the couple years. Now I've been broadcasting for four plus years, but been meeting people for over two and a half. So there's, there's, there's something to it. People want to meet other people, especially like-minded people. Right. Right. Yeah. So yeah. So I, yeah. That's there's there's so much more, <laughs> so much there. more to go over, but um, it's, and, and just have fun. I guess that's the thing is have, fun with it because I truly believe live broadcasting is here to stay, which, which platforms are going to last. I, I'm not an expert in that. And we can't, we can't, we can't really predict that, but I would say if you only had to pick one, probably Facebook live, cause it would be a little bit easier in the beginning and you already have people there and then branch out to Periscope unless you're just really brave and you just want to go for it. Well, I think we have a bunch of brave chicks in our community and, do. Do. you know, especially if Periscope is a brand new word to you and maybe you're just um, feeling a little blah or in a funk about Facebook, go put yourself out on a different platform. And even if you gain one new client, one new follower, one new connection, one new yes. um, power partner, you know, you never know who you could connect with. And so, um, I remember uh, 
probably, well, four years ago, I think when Periscope came out, I followed a couple people and one was a physical trainer that would do morning exercise routine. So it was just a five minute stretching, but mm -hmm. I would put my little phone, you know, up and I would turn on that person and they said, okay, arms out, you know, neck, you know, back. And they just did, but consistently day after day, a little five minute warm up exercise. And that became part of my morning routine. So if you have something like that in your realm of, um, expertise, uh, you know, sharing yeah. that. And, and you talked about the niches and, or niches and, um, you know, we have, uh, Nancy was talking a little bit about her historical, um, posts that she does. Um, and some of those, you know, could be read in like a story hour type thing where you're reading yeah. your post, Nancy, because oftentimes people, like you say, you don't necessarily want to post it on Facebook. Um, but maybe you're reading it. Maybe the, Maybe it's your voice. Remember how Larissa said she was in her pajamas and she was focusing on the dogs. But if you had a really interesting historical fact, uh, you have many, that becomes your content and possibly you, um, you know, release one of those a day or one every other day or two, three a week. But you don't even have to look at you. You could be the one narrating it, but you could be focusing yes. on a, a, a picture or a, a, a a sculpture or the beautiful sunset or whatever you know so um or dogs if you have dogs people love seeing dogs that's for sure yeah well, Larissa, this is so great and um i want to open it up to see if anybody has questions we have um a good 10 minutes left and uh you've shared so many great tips i'm i it's so funny because i get so excited and inspired to do it but Seriously, Larissa, when it comes right down to it, I don't wear makeup every day. I put makeup mm -hmm. on today probably the first time in seven months. Seven mm -hmm. months. I mean, every day my hair is up in a ponytail. I'm in my, you know, just whatever, because all my stuff is behind a screen. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't do selfies. I don't do any of that. And so uh, I, I wouldn't, my, I don't know if I'm brave enough to just come it, you know, I want to be authentic and I am very authentic, but, yeah. but I, I felt like I had to put makeup on for this because it was going, you know, as a recording and it was going to be archived or whatever. So I did the whole makeup <laughs> thing. Um, right. But can I, you know, do it with the hair and a pony or braids yes. or a hat on or whatever, you, you know, can. talk to me about that. Yeah. It's interesting you bring that up because I have a friend who's an author. Well, I have several friends who are authors, but one of my friends, my friend Ginger, her book has just been out a little over a year and she went to something recently and they were talking about live broadcasting and she's heard this from me for months. I'm like, girl, you have got to live broadcast. You've got a whole book of content. You are awesome in person. People love you. Oh. You just need to get out there. And the person she was talking to said, people want authenticity. Go on there without makeup. Go on with the ponytail in your hair. Her problem is, is that she teaches, not problem, her challenge is she teaches water aerobics. So she comes home mm -hmm. a hot mess. And that person said, put a hat on, you know, maybe put a little lipstick on if you, if you feel like you'd look really like, you know, Wash blah. Out or something. Um, yeah. But definitely people want that authenticity. I do it because it just gets me up and gets me going for the day. And it's part of my routine. Now, the difference, though, is now Periscope actually has an option where either A, like you were telling Nancy, you can just show a great sunset, your favorite plant, you know, whatever, um, a, a historical picture in Nancy's case, or you can just go on with your voice, which is interesting because the whole reason Periscope people get on there is to see, but then it's just your little bubble that has your picture in it from your profile and then your voice just kind of does this thing. I have one person that does that every Monday and prays because that she doesn't have to worry about how she looks. So that is an option just to build up on Periscope. Eventually you're going to want to show your face because people are going to ask and that's what right, happens. Right. Who is this? Yeah. yeah they're like, <laughs> your face, you know, and, and there's something that says, you know, <laughs> something about connecting with the eyeballs. So yeah, Rob, yeah, but you could Robin's do it. telling me I'm brave. I do it all the time. I do it all the time in the safe, uh, you, you know, confines of just the chicks that are already, that already know right. and love me, you know, not the strangers that are, you know, but right. what, I don't know what I'm worried about. I don't know. I don't know why I just, you know, I stop myself and, uh, yeah. but just from the video, I don't stop myself and, you know, very other, many other yeah. ways. It's just, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll 
I will. Okay, starting with the stories. I'm going to start with some video mm -hmm. too. So uh, what I yeah. do, you know, I, I do the video just with the voice. I just read the lesson every week um, and put that out there. But I could, mm -hmm. um, you know, I could start talking about other things. So right. Absolutely. Well, you, could put it on, you could put it on video, Jules. The lesson? Yeah. I already do. I do that. Yeah. Every week. Oh, the, yeah. Yeah. So, but I just read it. Like you don't see me reading it. Um, you just hear me read it. I just do a screen share. So, um, yeah. But okay. So other questions for Miss Larissa? Um, I have, they're, they're related. Um, is, are you talking about a broadcast as the same as a podcast? No, they're different um, for a couple reasons. The obvious one is it's just your voice. There's a little bit of technology differences, and I'm not very familiar with it, um, though I'm very interested in podcasting. You have a different group of people. Um, and this is not my full experience. I'll just share my little bit of experience, and whoever is the podcasting okay. expert in Chicks can help us with the rest of this. There are people like my friend Jen Long who would love to listen to me, but they can't do any of the fluff. She can't do the, the, the theme song and the intro and all the silliness. She just wants the content, that 20 minutes that I give. So if I were to do a podcast, I would just do my tips and probably do maybe one a week and then do all my tips in one and just boom, 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 boom. Still interject a few things here and there, but none of that silliness and interactive and engagement that other people need Plus, then you're not tempted to watch me because on Periscope, you get to watch. And so it's hard because people are watching me and I'm like, hey, look at my notes or hey, look at my new fun hourglass pen or my, you know, this kind of stuff is fun. But with a podcast, people can just put it on and drive to work for an hour and not, there's never going to be anything they're going to show. They, refer, they tell you, hey, go to the show notes and look up X, Y, Z. So that's the biggest difference is that it seems like it's kind of, no frills people on podcast not a hundred percent because i i like to listen to podcasts as well but as a broadcaster i prefer podcasting because the people don't know me and i see when i go into someone's broadcast they recognize me because i'm blessed to have been interacting with so many people so i can't go in and hide so i'm in there trying to put my makeup on and Susie q's like hey larissa and i don't want to be rude because i'm a connector and blah 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 you know um, so yeah, so podcasting is different for those couple reasons. So, so podcasting how, okay. basically just, there's no interaction, I think is it what was, you're saying. Right. There's no interaction unless you have, you're interviewing somebody. Yeah. Got it. Right. Okay. And, and podcast Wait, is only no. audio. It's not visual. It's just yeah. not audio. Some people well, okay. will videotape. Some people will videotape their podcasts. But in my case, I probably wouldn't videotape my podcast because I'm on video so much. And that would give you opportunity, Julie, to not wear makeup and not worry about it because right. you just podcast. Right. Just audio. Like, yeah. radio, like radio versus TV. Yes, exactly. Yeah. exactly. And then their podcasts are still very popular. So if you want to start there and practice because you can repurpose all that content both ways. So, um, Larissa, how can we best support you um, do with what you're doing, and how can we connect to you? Okay, so I do have a website, and it's back up and running. We had a little glitch last week, and so I'm at gratefulchick.com, and the, the hard part, the, the, the brander's nightmare is that it's G-R-8-T, F U L. So had I thought that through, I maybe not would not have spelled it like that, but I thought it would be fun. So grateful chick C H I C K dot com is my website where you could find an email or on Facebook it's Grateful Tribe doing community well. So that's where I it's an open group, it's not private, and that way you can message me if we're not already friends. Chicks Connect are, you know, Chicks in Chicks Connect are really good about just sending personal friend requests. Um, but in, you know, the rest of the world doesn't necessarily do that. So the, the, the work page, if you will, the community page would be Grateful Chick or Grateful Tribe doing community well. And just, just kind of like what I said earlier, the easiest, fastest, least expensive thing we can do for each other is going in and, wow, that's a great positive comment or meme or graphics share it directly from our pages on facebook 
um, Instagram, the Instagram expert will have to kind of share with that. Um, and uh, yeah, so just sharing out that positive stuff as we can help each other build our tribes. Um, those would be, you know, the best ways. Um, and in this season, I am working on, you know, I, I do speak and I do workshops. Um, in this season, I have to be a little bit careful as I'm dealing with a, a spouse with cancer. So I, um, I, I just did kind of my last big one for the year. Um, and I'm trying to stay a little closer to home. So it's hard, you know, it's hard to support me outside of that right now. <laughs> and prayer. If you're a praying person, lots of prayers would be awesome. <laughs> yes. Well, Larissa, thank you so much for your time. Thank you to everyone who uh, is watching live, as well as those hashtag replay people. Right, Larissa? Yes. Yes. So, um, and we just thank you for your courage um, to chart this territory that, uh, you know, we haven't um, done ourselves. So right. we're so, so proud of you and so grateful that you are the grateful chick. And we just appreciate you and all of your content and information today. And I just appreciate you as a dear friend too. Thank you, Julie. Thanks for that sweet comment, Leslie, and fun to see your face, Nancy. And Best wishes, Shannon, on your part. <laughs> All <laughs> right. Julie. All God right. Bless. Take care.